Oh, that's close. Let's uh, talk about something pretty serious. Let's talk about self-defense in China. What I mean by self-defense is, what if you get into trouble? What if you get attacked? What if you think you're in danger and you have to lash out? What should you do? Well, I actually have an example because not that long ago, I was in an alleyway and just doing my usual kind of thing. I go out and I film and there was an incredibly drunk man and he was harassing some passerbys and he was puking in a bucket and he was just in general being very obnoxious. And some of the local people actually came to help him, right? I must mention that this was in Hong Kong, by the way, not in mainland China. I've been in some pretty dangerous situations in mainland China, which I will cover in this video as well. But I'm just using this for, as an example because I've actually got footage of it, right? So I was filming the fact that the local security guard came there and one of the shop owners from nearby, they were actually very nice to him. They tried to get him on his feet, try to like see he was okay, try to move him along, you know. So I was filming all of this and then suddenly he noticed that I had a camera on him. And of course, he was very unhappy. So he charged me, he threw his seafood or whatever he had in that packet at me and he came up to me. Obviously I stopped recording because I had to deal with the situation. And he came up and he was threatening to punch me. And all I did was I stood still and a very stern voice said to him in Chinese, you're drunk, stop, be quiet. And luckily, you know, those other guys came and they pulled him away. But I did not punch him because let's be fair, the guy ran up to me, he had his fist out ready to punch me. If I had struck out and punched him, which is kind of a natural reaction for most people, I would have been in a world of hurt. That's something that you don't understand about China is that if you get into any kind of physical altercation, you will always be on the losing end. And there are a lot of examples that I can give you. We're going to talk about Wendell Brown in a minute. We're going to talk about a lot of these things and also the things that have happened to me. But I just have to make it very, very clear that you should never, ever strike out. Defend yourself, yes. Get yourself out of the situation, but do never, ever, ever hit anybody in China. Now, I don't want this to be a fear-mongering video. I don't want you to watch this video and think, oh, I shouldn't go to China. I might get into some trouble because in the 14 years that I lived in China, and don't forget, I explored most of China. I am not afraid of walking down dark alleys at night to get my B-roll and to explore. I only ever got into trouble twice. But one of the times I got into trouble is very instructional, and that's why I'm going to explain it to you. So when I first got to China, one of the things that blew me away was the fact that you could go and get a foot massage for 35 RMB, which is next to nothing. You know, in the West, to go get a massage or a spa treatment or something, it's a luxury. It's a very, very expensive. So the fact that I could go and get a 45-minute foot massage for 35 RMB meant that it was just amazing. So I used to go every single time I went out drinking with my friends. We'd end up going for a foot massage afterwards and sit there and drink. They've got a very nice setup. You can watch TV, order beer, and sit there and have a foot massage. So one night after a fairly heavy drinking session, I went with a friend of mine to one of these foot massage places. And he was looking for something a little more. Now, a lot of these massage places also offer prostitution services upstairs, or at least some kind of happy ending massages, things like that. So what happened was he went upstairs to try and get what he was looking for, but it wasn't that kind of place and they refused him. So he proposed the massage lady and she said no. So he came straight downstairs, said to me, hey, they're not going to give me what I'm looking for, so I'm out of here. So he left and I finished up my foot massage. But when I tried to leave, they tried to charge me a huge amount of money. Well, it was for me at the time for my friend's massage, which he didn't have because he literally went upstairs, asked them if they would do whatever he wanted. They said no, and he left. So I refused to pay for his massage and I just put down the money for my massage, which was 35 RMB, put it down and I walked out and all of the staff from the establishment surrounded me. There's about 30, 20, 30 of them. And they demanded that I pay 200 RMB, not 35, for my friend's massage. So I was like, no, I'm not paying that. And I was very belligerent and adamant. I was pretty drunk at the time, so I was, you know, being belligerent. I normally am not that way. Anyway, this one staff member really got in my face and he was insulting me. He was calling me names, young guides, you know, all this nonsense, like really bad sort of names in my face. So I said to him, you are a rubbish person. 
which was my mistake. I should have just backed down. I should have paid the money and left, you know, or at the very least just try to call the cops over or something. But I thought I'd fight back. So I called him a bad name and he turned around and used that to his advantage, turned around to the crowd and said, this foreigner called all Chinese people rubbish people. And then I just got attacked by a mob, basically. Everyone that was surrounding, because not only the uh, staff, but a lot of onlookers and bystanders were there. They all started punching and kicking me. It was a crazy mob attack. I got knocked to the floor at least twice. I got back up twice. Uh, long and the short of it is I managed to flag over some police that were you know, doing a patrol in one of their little golf carts. They came over, they broke up the fight and they took us all down to the police station, me and those staff members. Now here is the important part, the negotiation phase. This happens whenever there's a dispute in China. The police take you to drink tea, it's called. They take you down to the station. They took the like three or four staff members that were involved that they could identify. We all went down to the police station. The staff members demanded I pay the money. I said, no, it, that, never mind the fact that I had like a swollen head and I had marks all over me. They didn't care about that. It's all about the money. Um, the, obviously, the, the staff and whatever, they didn't get into any trouble. I was the one that was in trouble now because I'm a foreigner. So anyway, the thing is, they sat down and we were negotiating and the police took my side and they said, why should he pay for a massage that he didn't get and that never happened in the first place? So the end, the end of this whole thing was I paid 50 RMB instead of 35. So it was a little extra um, for like a service fee or something. And they brought my bicycle because I, I forgot to mention that when they surrounded me, I had a bicycle. They took my bicycle away from me um, and hid it in an alley. But they brought my bicycle back to me. I paid the 50 RMB and I went on my merry way with a swollen head and, you know, bruises and all that. And they went on their merry way. Now, this is how it works in China. And if you cannot negotiate, if that negotiation stage fails, that's when the law gets involved and that's what you don't want. Now, the reason I'm rehashing and telling the story again is because it's very relevant to what happened to Wendell Brown, who I'm going to talk about in a minute. But before we go there, we have to talk about drunk Chinese men. Now, drunken men, whether they're Chinese or not, the world over all kind of act stupidly, either in a funny way or a belligerent way or whatever. But there's something different that happens in China, and it's this culture of face, right? If I go to a bar in America or uh, South Africa or wherever and I see a Chinese person, I'm not going to shout, hey, Chinese man, come here, come drink. I will buy you a drink, Chinese man. Let me take photos with you, Chinese man. What do you think of our Australia? What do you think of our South Africa? But in China, it's different because of the lack of exposure to foreigners. There's this whole face culture and they want you to come over to their table. They want to drink with you. They want to prove they can drink more than a foreigner. They want to play drinking games with you. They want to take photos with you. They want to show you off to their friends, invite their friends to come and meet you. And it's actually really annoying. I actually see this as a form of harassment because you can never really escape it. Uh, case in point, when I went with my wife to Xiaoguan and we sat down in a little restaurant at the end of a long day and this drunken guy saw me there and I just wanted to have one beer and a meal. He came over and he putting his arms around me, he's shouting, he wants to drink with me, he wants to buy me drinks, he wants to take photos with me, try to kiss me. So I had to get out of the situation and what I did was I just got up and left. That's literally the best thing you can do is just leave. I, I cancelled my order for food, I told the, the waitress, cancel my order and I just left. That's what you've got to do. Now let's talk about Wendell Brown. He came over to China to do what a lot of foreigners do, English teaching. But there's a different kind of a brand of English teaching where you come and you teach sports. Uh, and I've actually had an interview with a guy who did this with basketball, but he does it with football. So what you do is you come over, you coach the kids in basketball or football or whatever it is. And at the same time, you're teaching them English because you got to, you know, on the court, shout at them and stuff. And English teaching is very much built into the whole learning sports thing. So he was over doing this whole English sports teaching thing. And he decided to go out and celebrate a friend's birthday at a bar and they went out drinking and a table of drunken Chinese men invited him over to drink with them. Typical thing, they want to take photos, they want to play drinking games. And I'm pretty sure by that point, just like me, he'd gotten tired of this because, you know, it does get a bit much. It becomes very annoying every time you want to go out drinking or go to a bar that you get pulled into this kind of situation. Sometimes you just want to be left alone. Sometimes you just want to spend time with your friends. Anyway, he refused them. The problem is that they were fairly well connected fairly rich guys and that's, this is what happens. Those are the kind of people that usually end up in these bars or these kind of more uh, richer sort of connected guys. 
And when he refused them, it made them lose face. Now, to lose face in China is the biggest insult that you could ever have. It's, it's life shattering, right? And it's, it's a terrible thing. So because he made them lose face, they got belligerent, started throwing beer bottles at him, started to call him names, all this kind of nonsense, right? Now, there is surveillance footage of what happened to Wendell Brown, but it's not incredibly clear. But basically what happened was he defended himself. He swears he didn't hit anyone, but one of the other guys got injured during this whole escapade. Now, they went down to the negotiating thing. He was obviously arrested. Uh, they went down to negotiate. They wanted 100,000 US dollars in compensation, which he refused to pay. Um, and then he ended up going into the court system and the law system, which is what I uh, said is what you want to avoid. Now, here's the very interesting thing is that out of all of the people involved in this, including the beer bottle throwing, which can be seen in the footage, by the way, all the tussles, all the nonsense, he is the only person who got charged with anything. And that's because these connected guys obviously knew the police, knew the local government or whatever the case. And that's why he couldn't get released is because this guy had lost face. That's why this actually went forward. It's all about connections, it's all about Guanxi. And this is a, very unfortunate. He should have, when they kept pestering him to drink, he should have left. That's where he made his mistake. He could have avoided this 100% if he just got up and left. But because he stuck around, this whole thing happened. So anyway, he ended up getting four years jail time, a four year jail term, which recently was reduced to a three year jail term because he renegotiated and he ended up paying 200,000 RMB to the uh, complainant. And uh, he will actually be released in September of this year. We're keeping a close eye on the guy and wishing him the best. It's an awful situation he's in. But this is what I would like all of you guys to take away from this video is trouble can be avoided in China very easily. All right, like I said, 14 years and only two little incidents. But you have to know when to just get up and go. You have to always get yourself out of the situation. Learn from Wendell Brown and uh, learn from my mistakes. Now you understand how the whole thing works. First of all, get out of the situation if you can. If something happens and you go to the negotiation phase, try and work it out because you don't want the law to get involved because as soon as the law gets involved, then you're looking at pretty much you know, guaranteed jail time or at least being barred from leaving the country. There's all sorts of nonsense that goes on. And nine times, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they will side with the Chinese person. As you've seen in my case, nobody got into trouble that attacked me and beat me up, even though they knew who they were. Wendell Brown's case, nobody else got convicted of assault, even though they threw beer bottles and stuff at him. The foreigner is always going to be the one. And China has a 99% conviction rate when it comes to court cases. So, you know, you're pretty much screwed. So try and not let it get to that level so to wrap it up guys basically be careful if you see trouble brewing better get yourself out of the situation i know for a person like myself it's very difficult and i always try to get involved because i've got that built-in sort of um i don't know where it comes from my upbringing or whatever but i always like to seek justice if i see someone in trouble i always step in to help it's not a very healthy thing to to do in china I've gotten myself into a lot of dangerous situations because of this attitude of mine. I still, I'm, I'm not going to change, but I understand China. I can speak Chinese. I have Chinese family. I kind of know how to deal with these situations better than most. So if you're a tourist or someone who's unfamiliar with China, just, just get yourself out of the situation if you can. Anyway, thank you very much. Sorry. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate you guys coming here to my channel absolutely love all of you and until next time you know the drill as always stay awesome hey guys um you got us in there yeah. just met a subscriber yes like <laughs> cool it was really awesome <laughs> thank you can you do me a favor can you tell everybody to stay awesome stay wholesome very cool man super yes, nice to meet you. you man oh and don't forget every single friday you can catch another serpent today video here 1 p.m eastern standard time seamilk actually has a story about when he punched someone and went to jail up on his channel over here so you can go check that out and don't forget most importantly every single monday go and check out an adv china video that's c milk and myself we do these adventures around the world over there <laughs>